Welcome in sneaker fam. My name is Nate and this is Sneakers and Streets. Thank you so much for tuning in. We've got a great sneaker today. It's the Nike Odyssey React. Real quick, just before we get into it, I truly appreciate every person who likes, comments, and subscribes. You all make a difference. I notice and appreciate every single time you do it. The first thing I have to talk about when reviewing any React sneaker is the cushioning material. React is Nike's direct response to Adidas Boost technology. It dominates the market right now because of the greater energy return, comfort, and softness that the technology provides. That is, until React hit the market. Nike doesn't just believe that this can compete with Boost, Nike believes this can beat Boost. And according to Nike's data, React is 5% lighter, 11% softer, and offers 10% greater energy return than its predecessor, Lunarlon. So that's the claim to fame for this shoe so far. Other models have had React in them, but they weren't fully React sneakers. They just had React in them. Typically these were basketball shoes, not runners. So we'll get a little more in depth on the cushioning material towards the later stages of the review. When we talk about the upper though, we're gonna get pretty standard material. The Odyssey React does not have a fly knit upper. It's got a standard fly mesh material. You're not gonna get anything too out of the ordinary. It's a relatively thin material with some ventilation holes. You also get some cushioning around the back heel portion of the shoe. The heel cup isn't the most supportive. It's not super tall and sort of shallow. So casual lifestyle wear or casual running will work great, but if you plan on wearing these in any situation that requires quick turns, these are not gonna be the best. The upper material is just not super stretched. So you're not gonna get that sock-like fit that you're used to in other fly knit shoes. Now, when we get to the tongue of the shoe though, that's quite a bit different. It uses a very stretchy neoprene material. I do like the shoe's tongue very much as you can just kind of pull it up and then slip your foot in. Speaking of which, the sizing in this shoe is a little bit difficult. I normally wear a 9.5 and I got these in a 10. Even still, they felt a bit tight for me. Compared to the Epic React, these are actually a bit pointier and more narrow. I can feel that a little bit. So in terms of my sizing recommendation, go up half a size. And if you have wider feet, this just may not be the shoe for you. You might wanna opt for the Epic React instead. There are a couple of other notable things before we get to that React material. The pull tab is actually functional unlike many other shoes nowadays. However, it honestly doesn't feel the strongest. If I really wanted to, I think I could rip it off. There also is a tiny bit of reflective 3M material on the back. So I guess if you plan on running with these, you do get some safety at night. Also somewhat reminiscent of NMDs, you do get a stabilizer built into the side of the cushioning material. The triangular piece of plastic built into the cushioning material is actually there to provide extra structure for your foot. It sort of roots down deeper. That way, if you're susceptible to rolling your ankle, this will provide a bit more stability for you. Also, the outsole is quite a bit different here than you would get on the Epic React. On the Epic React and the Odyssey React, the React material is directly touching the floor. Now, on this model, you do get four different high abrasion rubber plates, which is different from the Epic React, which only has two. It's kind of weird that they made the budget version of the shoe more durable, but maybe Nike has a reason for this? Now is probably the most important portion of the review, talking about the React cushioning material. Before I start this, I just wanna preface it by saying, I'm a little biased. I own probably over 15 Boost sneakers. So I love Boost, I use Boost, I wear Boost almost every day. I'm gonna have really high standards and high expectations for this material if it's gonna win my heart over. And to be honest, it kind of did. A lot of people report that Boost is actually a bit too squishy and that your feet sink in too much and it doesn't feel comfortable by the end of the day. I am happy to say that I have not experienced that with React cushioning. Let's say we're grading how well the material supports your foot and how comfortable the material is. Boost is probably a B or a C in terms of support, but an A plus in comfort. React is probably an A or an A minus in comfort, but an A plus in support. After a long day of wearing Boost, it kind of loses that comfort. Your feet sink in and it doesn't feel quite right. On the other hand, after a full day of wearing React, it does still provide that support that I feel your foot needs. 
This is why nobody who knows about shoes brags about wearing Skechers. Sure, Skechers do have a very squishy memory foam material, but your foot sinks in a little too much and you don't get the support that you really want at the end of the day. And that support is something the React provides. Another interesting thing about the material is that Nike has actually algorithmically decided where to put these grooves in it. Basically what that means is Nike measured a ton of people's feet and they figured out what portions of the shoe need more structure and what portions of the shoe need less structure. Then they used a lot of fancy equations in math to figure out where to put these grooves in so that certain parts would squish in and some parts wouldn't. Pretty interesting stuff. Also, this material is able to be molded into any way or shape, unlike Boost. Boost has those little pellets that they use to form in the material, so it's always gonna have a certain texture, while React can be made with any texture that Nike wants. So in the future, we may get more dramatic cuts into the React, or we may get none. Overall though, I think that this is a great competitor to Boost, and I'll definitely be throwing it into my rotation. Now for the shoe itself though, there were a few quality control complaints that I have about the pair that I got. I'm definitely not sponsored by Nike, so I'm not paid to give you a biased review. I'm paid by you guys. So I'm gonna give you the best review and the most unbiased review I can. First off was the pull tab that I mentioned earlier in the video. The stitching that holds it on just isn't the greatest. I feel like anybody could really rip it off if they wanted to. Also, the gluing on the shoe isn't the best. It holds together well, but you can definitely see it over a lot of the panels. And this part was the most egregious. The stabilizer plate on my right pair is almost totally separated from the React material. You can see where the glue is and where they neglected to glue it together. I mean, I could literally stick a penny in between these two. It doesn't appear like it's going to fall apart and I haven't had any troubles with it yet, but it kind of worries me for the future. And considering this is Nike's budget version of the React Trainer, I'm worried that other people might have a similar experience. So while I'm very happy about my shoes overall, there are definitely some worries you should have about the quality assurance here. Make sure to save your receipt just in case you have any issues like I did. At the end of the day though, would I recommend this shoe? Yes, and for quite a few reasons. It's great if you're balling on a budget. These are only 120 bucks and for most sneakerheads, that's nothing. If you can get any kind of a Nike coupon or if you find these at an outlet, there's gonna be a great value. Also, I feel like this is a direct and equal competitor to Boost. React is a little bit better in terms of support and a little worse in terms of comfort. So overall, I think it's just preference on which one you'll like better. There are a few issues for me considering that the upper is not a premium material, I would prefer Flynet, and the glue and stitching aren't 100% up to par with what I'd want from a $120 shoe. Overall though, if you're looking for a new pair of sneakers, and something different from the boost you're normally buying, give these a shot. Also, before you get out of here, guys, all of the things I use in my videos are linked down in the description. Everything I use from the shoe stand, the tripod, and the lighting is all down below. I'm not sponsored by any of the companies listed, but I do get a small kickback when you buy it through my link, or if you buy anything from my link. So if you wanna support the channel, you don't have to pay anything extra, just go to Amazon through one of the links below. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Thank you so much for supporting and we'll see you again next week.